everyone, welcome to today's edition of One Single Story. We are reading this week the book of Habakkuk, but as we have in some other weeks, inserted some other passages that help support the theme um, of a particular passage. And today's reading would have been Psalm 18. About halfway through, it says, He led me to a place of safety. He rescued me because he delights in me. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He restored me because of my innocence, for I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not turned from my God to follow evil. I have followed all his regulations. I have never abandoned his decrees. I am blameless before God. I have kept myself from sin. The Lord rewarded me for doing right. He has seen my innocence. To the faithful, you show yourself faithful. To those with integrity, you show integrity. To the pure, you show yourself pure, but to the crooked, you show yourself shrewd. You rescue the humble, but you humiliate the proud. Um, The writer here says, I've kept all the regulations. I have not sinned. I haven't abandoned his ways. I am blameless. He said, I kept myself from sin, and the Lord rewarded me for doing right. Is it possible to keep yourself from sin, and is that different from being blameless? It's one of the reasons why I look forward to going to sleep, because I'm like, maybe during this time I can get by without (laughs) doing anything stupid or wrong. And even then, that may be a a struggle. Uh, Is it possible to keep ourselves from sin? Uh, I think I would answer that yes and no in that, Oftentimes, the sin occurs in in our heart, our minds, without ever manifesting into actions. But I'm 100% convinced that our choices and decisions and our disciplines play a huge role Mm. in that, whether we do or do not. Yeah, I want to say that I want to say that we can, but realistically, I don't think that we can. Doesn't last long. No. You know, like the keyword you used there was discipline. That's what I had in my answer too. Is just that you can discipline yourself to avoid the things that you were doing before, but it's going to be really hard to be sinless or not to sin. So, what is the purpose of the Holy Spirit? Because this is a, this is a this is a real challenge for me. I think my my flesh wants to say, "Yeah, I'm going to sin." Occasionally, that's what mm-hmm. I—that's what the flesh answer wants to say. But the scriptures say we've been given the Holy Spirit to live a godly life. That later in the New Testament it says that we're not obligated mm-hmm. to sin because of the Holy Spirit. So, is, is it our is our sin our shunning of the Holy Spirit or does the Holy Spirit, because you, I think you use the word realistic, it's not realistic to mm-hmm. expect us to be able to do that. Can we live a spirit-filled life enough that we do not sin? And would anybody like us if we did? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, Paul talks about the struggles between flesh and spirit and that he even had that, the things that he ought to do, he doesn't do, and the things he's not supposed to do, he does. So, yeah, I I oftentimes think that it's just the battle between your flesh and your spirit, and if you give in to your flesh continually, that's when you're grieving the Holy Spirit. I think the two cannot coexist simultaneously. Uh, It's kind of the way you ask the question. if we live by the, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, who dwells in us, not only at salvation, but gives us wisdom, courage, power, ability to live out the, the desires of God for our life, I think sometimes it is the absence of this being the influence that allows us to make the wrong choices or decisions. Um, <clears throat> I kind of see it as um, a container. If you fill it with all of this content, there's no room for this content 
but even the slightest bit of void, then there's room for mm-hmm. something else to, to yeah. come into there. You referred to Paul talking about a struggle. Mm-hmm. Um, and in, if if he's the one that wrote Romans, and most likely is the one that wrote Romans, that's chapter 7. And he talks about nothing good lives in me. Um, I want to do what is right, but I can't. Uh, I want to do what is good, but I don't. But then he goes, the very next chapter, chapter 8, he says, so now there's no condemnation to those who belong to Christ Jesus, and because you belong to him, the power of the life-giving spirit has freed you from the power of sin. And he goes on down, so it is verse 12 of chapter 8 that he says, therefore, dear brothers and sisters, you have no obligation to do what your sinful nature urges you to do, for if you live by its dictates, you will die, but if through the power of the Spirit you put to death the deeds of your sinful nature, you will live for all who are led by the Spirit are children of God. So he, he says it's a struggle, but he says you're not obligated to. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. yeah. And, and again, the, the way I see that is sin no longer holds you in captivity, mm-hmm. uh, like a, a cell block where you don't have a choice. You're here. You, you're going to live this way. You can't get out of that. But if the door's open, you can go in and out of there all you want to, and we do go in there and make those choices and decisions sometimes because we do have the, the ability to choose and decide, and there, therein comes the struggle. But we're not obligated. We don't have to. We've not been condemned or judged to that way of living because we've been set free. Yeah, and because I, I can think of a situation. I'm I'm, I'll give a personal reference. So I don't think you can remove the struggle. I don't think that is biblical. I think the power of the Holy Spirit gives you the ability to make the right choice every time, mm-hmm. which removes the sin. Mm-hmm. Makes you blameless, and I think now I would also say I don't think sinless and blameless are the same. Yeah, because right. I think there are times you sin that you're blameless. Mm-hmm. You, you're not. You, you, that's not how you intended. You you hurt their feelings. You right. miss. You know. You, it's, there's a lot of reasons why. But there are other times. All right. So recently. Um. I try to avoid, I try, don't always work out this way, but I try to avoid any serious conversation by text or by email. I try to avoid it. Mm. It's, it's, it never turns out good. And I got in a situation recently, and about two or three texts in, I knew, like, this is, this is going to be bad. And I typed out a message. And I knew, listen, I'm telling you, I knew. You knew you should. I should not yeah. hit the green send button. I uh-huh. knew, mm-hmm. I knew, I knew. Like, this ain't going to make it no better. Like, mm-hmm. you should just, you should erase it. Like, I knew. Mm-hmm. But I didn't choose to not send it. I chose mm-hmm. to send it. Mm-hmm. And it it did exactly what I knew it was going to do. Flame. Yeah, that's right. You know, I mean, because you, that, that, that it's like the man said, he said, we walk around all day with two cans in our hands, a can of water, a can of gasoline. And you got to know what you're throwing each on. Mm-hmm. He said, there's some fires you need to put out and there's some fires you need to stoke. He said, but if you, if you throw gasoline on the wrong fire, it's going to destroy things that you should have saved mm-hmm. it from. Mm-hmm. And um, I, that was a situation where, look, the Holy Spirit tried to help you. Tried to tell me yeah. not to do it, mm-hmm. and I said, "Forget you." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, <laughs> now I didn't. That's not how. It, that's not it. But that's not what I said in my mind. But but your actions. That's right. My actions did. Decision. And people say, "Oh, I would never talk to God like that." Yeah, we do, do talk to God yeah, all like that yeah. because yeah. we know it's different if you don't know. I mean, I'm going to. And I would say the overwhelming majority of sin we commit, we know. Mm. Yeah. There, there, there are times I'm clueless, but it is so small. Yeah. That number is so small. Most of the time it is, I know. Yeah. I, it's coming. And if I do it, you know. And so the question isn't the struggle. 
because we live in this fleshly body. There's going to come a day when it's not a struggle anymore. In eternity, I don't believe it's a battle. We have that. We we have that. That struggle anymore. You know, I, I I was reading a commentary recently because of a sermon we were preaching. It was, and and it was talking about Jerusalem be repopulated. It's only going to be repopulated with the righteous. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we start the process all oh. over again. You're right back in the same boat, you know, mm-hmm. with sin eventually taking over. And um, I, I I don't think the question most of the time is whether. Now I do think there are t- there have been times in my life I have been far enough away from the Holy Spirit that if He was talking, He was having to holler, mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was just hearing it faint, you know. But if you're if you're seeking God, following after God, doing what He wants you to do. The Holy Spirit's going to be there mm-hmm. when you have that choice. Trying to say, "Hey, don't," and it, you know that sin in a text is a is a very very simple thing. But he's he's with you when you're getting ready to participate in an activity you shouldn't participate in. Talk about somebody in a way you shouldn't talk about. You know, um, uh, th- there's there's a multitude of of pieces to that, and. Um, I believe, I don't know that I've seen it. I've seen some people that I thought were close. Close, yeah. I believe God, the Holy Spirit, can give you the power to live a sinless life. I believe he can. Otherwise, He, why am I depending on him at all? Right. If he doesn't have the ability to 100% of the yeah. time do the right thing, yeah, all right. It's me that's in the way. It's not the yeah, Holy Spirit. Absolutely. Problem. And the reason I know he does enable us and gives us the the ability to live right and do right is because I, I see his work in my own mm-hmm. life. Now, like I said, I'm, I mess it up a lot of times. But thank God, there are areas where I can look now that I, I almost always messed them up in the past in certain areas when those situations arose, where now it is different. And it's 100% because I'm walking in a different relationship closer I'm hearing his voice more clear and and I'm yielding to that much quicker and so does he give us the ability to do that 100% as you said problem is we get in the way if you're walking with him like Jay just said I mean you're going to hear him more you're going to recognize his voice you're going to understand what he's trying to do but I mean we we can't we just can't expect the Holy Spirit to just zap <clears throat> zap those away yeah, and, and on previous podcasts, we talked about the awe and the fear and the respect of God. Uh, I think part of that is we we want to do right and please Him and honor and walk in that relationship um, so that He is glorified uh, rather than us making a mess of stuff mm-hmm. and bringing shame to His name. Well, thank you guys for joining us today on this edition of One Single Story. We hope you'll be back tomorrow as we continue a conversation around the book of Habakkuk.